There certainly are a lot of beautiful reptiles out there, but I'll bet you the five we're gonna talk about today, you've never heard of before. My name's Adam, this is Frankie. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. Okay, I promise, Fiji banded iguanas will not be on this list. I know I talk about them too much, but look how beautiful they are. So he will be my co-host, but Frankie will not be on the list. Do you like my new necklace? Okay, let's move on. Oh, and this time I actually am going to do it so that every one that we go, we go a little bit more rare and probably less likely you've ever heard of them as we go. Starting off with number five, squams. We're actually gonna do a tie. Eyelash vipers also. So squams and eyelash vipers, I never do this. I never give ties, but I just think small arboreal vipers are so freaking cool and you've probably heard of an eyelash viper, but you've never heard of a squam. These are, we're talking about like a foot and a half long, these tiny orange and green little vipers from Central Africa. And there's no anti-venom for them, which kind of makes it, I don't know, cooler to me. I mean, don't get bit by them or keep them as pets unless you really know what you're doing. I don't recommend that at all. But if you were to get a venomous snake, which I'm not saying you should, I'm saying you probably shouldn't. If you were, these might be a great option. Just simply because they're tiny, they're arboreal, their venom isn't going to kill you, although it will really ruin your day, and they're beautiful. So even if you had, I don't know, just a very long hook and you fed them with very long tongs and you were really, really careful and you never wanted to even interact with this thing at all, which is what I recommend for venomous snakes, how risky is this to start with a venomous snake? All right, Adam, put your thoughts together, keep moving. The point is, these things are showpieces and displays, but we're not talking about these as a pet, let's say. I'm gonna give them a pet score, everything on this list, because most, well, some of them don't make great pets, including this one, which I would give a two out of 10, by the way, for pet score. One out of 10, just don't keep venomous snakes unless you know what you're doing. But the reason that I think they're so beautiful, because, Eyelash vipers especially have a Christmas phase, which looks amazing. They can be bright yellow, like this one that we saw in Costa Rica. And just overall, they're the way that they look, think about it, okay? Eyelash vipers, what they're doing is mimicking a flower so that birds land on them, they can bite the bird and then eat it. That's crazy, that's so freaking cool. But the point behind the beauty of it it's a freaking yellow snake with a big head and eyelashes. What more could you possibly want? This is one of the coolest animals on the planet. My favorite venomous snake. It's not the coolest one or most deadly or anything like that. Just based on looks alone, nothing beats an eyelash viper or a squam. And squams, I don't talk about as much just because I've never really got to see one in person before, but I do know a lot of keepers who do have them and they keep them in arboreal setups that kind of look like basically how dart frog keepers keep their dart frogs and these big, beautiful, natural setups. And that's why I think that they're so darn beautiful because it's not just the snake, it's the environment too. And the environment, I mean, in the wild where you should keep them, don't keep them as pets. Number four, Parsons chameleons. Parsons chameleons are the biggest of all the chameleons, arguably, right? They're a chameleon from Madagascar. I got to see three different varieties of Parson chameleons in the wild in Madagascar. That video is right here. I'm very proud of it. Super cinematic. There's lemurs in it. I hope you really love it. But either way, I got to hold yellow lip Parsons chameleons, which are the big ones. And I also got to hold the orange eye Parsons chameleons, which are probably, in my opinion, the most beautiful chameleon that there is. More beautiful than carpets, in my opinion. Don't you dare. Don't you dare bite my ear. Diamond rub off on you. Just absolutely stunning colors. Even the females, because generally in a lot of species, males, really steal the show and females are more drab. Realistically, it's pretty beautiful, even just the coloration on these drab looking females when it comes to Parsons chameleons. Now these chameleons are insectivores, but the big ones, guess what? They're gonna eat baby chameleons too. They're gonna eat small vertebrae also, which is something that I never thought about. And then Bill Strand mentioned it as I was holding the thing and I'm like, well, it makes sense. It looks like a freaking dinosaur, a tree triceratops as Reptiliatus would say. So yeah, it makes sense. These things are going to eat other things besides bugs. Just overall, beautiful coloration, amazing to look at, super fun. If I had the room to get orange eye Parsons chameleons, that would be what I get. The problem is they're too big and I don't have the space and I was offered a pair earlier this week. Ah, that one was hard to say no to. And as a pet score, six out of 10, because 
They're not the perfect pet, but I mean, they're not gonna kill you or bite you and envenomate you. And if you really do like chameleons, as long as you had a big enough enclosure, you could take care of one without too much difficulty. Number three, Peninsular Rock Agamas. <laughs> what the heck is that? Every one of you asked, except for the one guy in the comment section. I actually knew what that was. Yeah, okay. Maybe you did. You're better than all of us. You're better than all of us. Because I'll tell you what, I actually did have to look up what this was. Didn't know. Someone brought it up in, a, in the Discord a few weeks ago. Link below if you want to join the Discord. And uh, I had no idea what it was. Never heard of it before. But boy, are they cool. Red is my favorite color. And these guys have red and orange heads. The males do anyway. And they have an, a yellow throat. I don't even know if it was technically a dewlap. Is it? I'm not smart enough to do what I do. Either way, this is for the babes, as Bill Strand would say at the Chameleon Academy. And these are not chameleons, they're gamas, which is the same family as Bearded Dragons, by the way. The point is, the males are freaking showstoppers, okay? Now, I've never seen these in captivity ever. Maybe they are. I actually didn't even really look it up. I have no idea. I just have never seen them. I've been to a bunch of expos. I've talked to a bunch of people, never heard of them before at all in captivity or the wild. These guys are from the Eastern Ghats, uh, which is a part of India, actually. So I've always wanted to go to the Western Ghats because that's where you find like gharials and Indian bullfrogs and stuff. But these guys would be pretty cool to see in the wild too. Like just imagine you stumble upon one of these males. Oh, the females look like this, by the way. They're pretty drab and boring. But I mean, at the end of the day, like in the lizard world, it is like how everything else works where the male has to attract the female, right? So the male puts on a display, he head bobs, he's bright colors, just like with birds and everything else, right? And the female gets to choose which one she wants. So that's how that works. They are insectivores. They like it pretty hot, really, really cool. I would love to see one of these in person. Never have. I don't think you have either. Therefore, zero out of 10 for a pet score because I just don't even think they're really available. And you shouldn't be taking them out of the wild. So let's move on. Number two, San Francisco garter snakes. Tied with red-sided garter snakes simply because San Francisco garter snakes are freaking illegal so many places. These guys you cannot own in mo- I is it all of the states? Anyway, red set of garter snakes are legal in more places and I can show you B-roll because I have a friend who has them. Probably the most beautiful garter snake in the world, the San Francisco garter snake, but we're talking about like a thousand to 2000 of them left in the entire world in the wild, which is in parts of California, if you couldn't guess by the name. And boy, are they freaking stunning. The reds and the blues, just amazing. And these guys are gonna have a weird diet even if you can keep them in captivity. We're talking about things like uh, not fish as much, but frog legs and things like that, right? So I don't know if you should get them on mice, you can, but again, this is definitely not a care guide on how to take care of these species in captivity. Just to, hey, look, it's beautiful. Like I'm doing show and tell for a living. This is wild. So they are endangered, right? San Francisco garter snakes. And in Canada, we can have them. We can have red-sided garter snakes. They're absolutely beautiful. They're not even really that expensive for us to keep. Uh, they don't mean to rub it in. <laughs> as I have a Fiji banded iguana on my shoulder the whole episode. Either way, I think just they're they're really cool. And in terms of garter snakes, a lot of people think that garter snakes are boring, right? Like the ribbon snakes of the world and Eastern garters and even Lake Ch Chapala, however you pronounce it. Lake Chapala. I get dumber and dumber as this video goes on, but no one's gonna tell you that red-sided garter snakes or San Francisco garter snakes are drab or boring. And that's why they have to be on this list. And number one, Toke geckos. Okay, I give them a bad rap and you probably knew that they existed, but they are beautiful. And of all the things that I have nice to say about them, the only thing I could really think that I actually meant is their beauty because they are not good pets for most people in that, well, it depends. If you want something you just look at and listen to, sure. I think that that's great just in the same way an Amazon tree boa is great. If you want an animal for handling, unless your name is uh, Dion or Reptiliatus, no. I mean, you're really gonna have to work with them, okay? These things don't play nice, they have attitudes, and they bite. And when they bite, they bite hard. This is arguably the second largest uh, gecko in the entire world after Lichianus geckos. They're from parts of Asia. I'm really a fan of them, but just not keeping them, because I don't wanna move them. Like I have Chihuahua geckos and Crested geckos, and to handle those things and move them, easy peasy lemon squeezy, but, Toge geckos to move them, it, it's difficult because they're fast and they want nothing to do with you. And it's fun to watch them eat and train them and they're beautiful. Like the or they look like Pokemon. I mean, 
They are probably the most beautiful gecko on the planet. Maybe William's eye would be close, but these are big and they make a sound, which is really cool too. So when I talk about beauty, I'm talking mostly visually, but their sound is pretty amazing too. And when I was in Indonesia a few months back, uh, even Thailand, we could hear them. Like I was in a fancy hotel, right? I don't know, like this is, but in for Indonesia, fancy hotels are like $100 a night. But either way, it was like the fanciest hotel of all the hotels we stayed at, right? Right downtown, right by the airport, we we're leaving the next morning. And all you could hear were these toke geckos, toke, like that crazy call that they have. and it was incessant and it went on and on and it was beautiful and I could fall asleep like a baby. So there you go, those are my top five most beautiful. There are so many, I could make so many parts to this. Hit the like button if you wanna see this video do well enough to make a part two because I could make so many parts on this video. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate that. And as always, as always, the misting system goes off as I try to, I'm just powering through it, don't care. Patreon supporters, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch, one-on-one -on -one conversations, all that for as little as a dollar a month, and that's it. Because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one. Really? Really. I guess they're on timers and I could have... See you next week.